Hello, this is Dr. Joanne Manson, Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Brigham and Women's Hospital. I'd like to talk with you about the new guidelines on aspirin in primary prevention of cardiovascular disease released by the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force and published in JAMA. Now, my colleagues, Dr. Sammy Amora, Cassandra Schufelt, and I were invited to write an editorial on these guidelines in JAMA Internal Medicine, and I'd like to review with you the changes in the guidelines and also our perspective on ways to integrate these new recommendations with some of the other guidelines. I want to emphasize that these are primary prevention guidelines, and they do not reflect on the strong recommendation for aspirin use in the secondary prevention setting in the absence of major major contraindications. Also, the dose of aspirin being recommended here is generally low dose, uh, 81 milligrams a day or between 75 and 100 milligrams a day. So what do the 2022 uh, USPSTF guidelines recommend? Well, first, they are saying that you should not use aspirin in men and women above the age of 60. And for those age groups, a D recommendation was given to avoid aspirin use. For age groups 40 to 59, a C recommendation of individualized uh, decision making so is for select patients, you know, recommend for select patients, was given for men and women who had a 10 year CVD risk score of at least 10% and did not have an increased risk of bleeding. Now, how is this different? from the 2016 recommendations. Well, there are differences in the age ranges as well as strength of recommendations. In 2016, the recommendation was for ages 50 to 69 and a 10-year CVD risk score greater than 10% or higher to consider aspirin use with a B recommendation and then um, insufficient data for those below the ages of 50 or 70 and older. Um, what's different uh, in, the, in the evidence base between the 2016 and the 2022 guidelines? Well, actually, the evidence for aspirin having at least modest benefits in primary prevention remains quite stable. So now there are 13 major clinical trials in primary prevention, more than 160,000 participants, and they're continuing to show, the trials are continuing to show that there's about a 10% reduction in major CVD events, 11% reduction, significant reduction in total MI, 9% reduction in total stroke, 18% reduction in ischemic stroke, but also substantial increase in the risk of bleeding, about 58% increased risk of GI bleeding, 31% increase in intracranial bleeding, and overall 44% increase in major uh, bleeding. Even though the evidence base is quite similar over time um, in terms of the reduction in CVD events for primary prevention and the increased risk of bleeding, there is an increased appreciation that bleeding risk substantially increases with age. It about doubles uh, the bleeding risk, about doubles for each decade after age 60. Also, there's less enthusiasm now for the use of um, aspirin for prevention of colorectal cancer and, and other cancers. So, so those are, are two important changes that may have led to these differences. Now, when you look carefully at the evidence base presented, there actually is an indication there for continuing to consider aspirin in those 60 to 69 if they have high CVD risk. Um, if you look at the quality, the, the results for quality adjusted life years and life years gained, um, there is a signal that there is benefit for both men and women, especially if they have a higher risk between 60 and 69, if they have, say, a 10-year CVD risk score of 20% or higher, there still seems to be uh, a, a, an overall benefit um, in, in terms of uh, either benefit or neutral results for um, net life years gained and benefits uh, for quality adjusted life years gained. And this may be particularly important for women because very few women would be eligible for aspirin if the age range is only through 
59, and um, very few of them are going to be having a 10-year risk above 10%. And also the Women's Health Study Aspirin trial had suggested that the greatest benefits were in women above the ages of, of 65. So considering that the evidence base does support some use with a very high risk score, um, like 20% or higher for those 60 and older and otherwise using the 10-year uh, uh, risk score of 10% or higher for ages 40 to 59. Now, in our editorial, we recommend um, considering uh, aspirin for uh, those who are 40 to 59, similar to what the task force recommends, 40 to 59 with a 10-year um, CBD risk score of 10% or higher, but considering it also for those who are 60 to 69 with a 20% or higher risk score. And for those with diabetes um, to consider because of the very high risk, um, especially among women, to consider the use of aspirin uh, between the ages of 40 and um, 69 if the risk is 10% or higher. Um, so how do you balance the risk of bleeding and the, and the risk of um, the benefits in terms of CVD reduction? It's very difficult without um, the use of a decision support tool. So we do want to mention that um, there is freely available, at no cost, a non-commercial product clinical decision support tool called Aspirin Guide available on the web at aspiringuide.com, also in iOS for iPhones. And this does have an internal calculator for the CBD risk score as well as a bleeding risk score and will provide number needed to treat versus number needed to harm so that you can um, compare the two and, and make an informed decision about uh, use of aspirin and primary prevention together with shared decision making with the patient. Thank you so much for your attention. This is Joanne Manson.